What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming to you at the very least every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday over the digital airwaves of YouTube. As usual, I'm here in my studio thanks to my official studio sponsor, FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel, the official studio sponsor of the Stephen A. Smith Show. By the way, as an aside, just wanted to take a moment to again tell y'all how much I appreciate the love and support from all of my followers and subscribers. Uh, it has now exceeded over 402,000 subscribers in the first seven and a half months. I can't thank y'all enough for showing me the love that you've shown me. Just keep it coming and I'm going to keep on coming. Please continue to like and follow the Stephen A. Smith show right here on YouTube. Just click the bell to get notified of all of our new content. While you're doing all of that, please don't forget to pick up a copy of my New York Times bestselling book, Straight Shooter, a memoir of second chances and first takes. I am not in my usual new studios. Um, I am actually at my home studio for the time being uh, because I'm about to hit the road over the next couple of days or so. But I'll be back in my official studio, in my brand new studio uh, next Wednesday. So feel free to tune in then. And I'll resume taking live callers. You know, one of the things that I wanted to do today is essentially highlight where I'm going with this. The normal opening monologue and stuff like that. Sometimes you got a big time guest and it simply ain't necessary. When I think about who I'm about to talk to, I'm about to talk to an individual who's a Hall of Famer, who's a champion, who's a natural born leader in the eyes of everybody that I know that has ever played with him. And dare I say, even against him, you know, that individual that I'm talking about, you don't find many people like him. You don't find folks who normally come out of high school, go straight to the pros and lives up to the billing that was thrown in their direction. When we talk about Kevin Garnett, a.k.a. KG, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Came out of high school, entered the draft in 1995 and was something sensational. He was the big ticket in Minnesota. There were championship aspirations associated with his name because ultimately he would have a teammate by the name of Stephon Marbury, who was also a great, great point guard coming out of Lincoln High School in Brooklyn, New York, um, spending a year at Georgia Tech University before uh, departing after his freshman year to enter the pros and be a teammate of Kevin Garnett. Him and the big ticket were expected to capture a championship, but it was never to be because Stephon Marbury didn't want to stay. He ultimately would depart from Minnesota. And after 14 years in Minnesota, ultimately Kevin Garnett would do the same, departing for the Boston Celtics. When his first year in Boston playing under head coach Doc Rivers with teammates like Paul Pierce and Ray Allen and Rajon Rondo, Kendrick Perkins, uh, my partner in crime at ESPN, NBA analyst extraordinaire for ESPN, um, watching them do their thing, winning a championship, blowing out the Los Angeles Lakers by 39 points in a closeout game six where the late great Kobe Bryant was on the bench crying because he was so despondent over the loss in an NBA Finals game. These are all memories that come associated with Kevin Garnett. Anything's possible. Anything's possible! Remember that? That was him. That was him. But more than sound bites, what he brought to the table was so many different things. First and foremost, above all else, was the level of authenticity. I've known him for years. There has never been a fake bone in his body. What you see is what you get. This brother's as straight as they come. You ask him a question, he's gonna give you an answer or he's not gonna give you an answer. What he's not going to do is fake the funk and be pretend pretentious in any way. He's going to let you know exactly where he stands. When we talk about having real conversations on the Stephen A. Smith show, what you're about to get is what I aspire to get from any guest that I have on. Someone who is their true, authentic self, unapologetic about how they feel, unapologetic about the way they express themselves and possessing a strong belief in being able to call it like they see it and letting the world know that's exactly what they're doing. There's enough phonies running around in this world. We all know that people who pretend to be one thing, but are far from that people who don't want to be authentic, who don't want to be real. 
And to be quite honest with you, I have no time for them. Needless to say, that isn't applicable to my guest coming up. It's the big ticket himself. It's Kevin Garnett. It's a conversation I've waited to have with him for a very, very long time. I couldn't wait for this. And I assure you, after you listen to part one of this two-part interview with Kevin Garnett, airing today, this Friday, throughout the weekend, part one, and then part two airing this Monday, I promise you, you won't walk away disappointed. Stephen A. Smith with the big ticket, the champion, the Hall of Famer, the one and only Kevin Garnett, up next, right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Buckle up. Here he comes. Score this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. And who wouldn't want a little something extra to celebrate if the team you're rooting for is victorious, you know? And even though we're well into the season, it's not too late to get started. In fact, there's no better time to get in on the action than now. We've seen the early season trends. We know what we're dealing with, and hopefully our bets follow suit. And this app is so easy to use. My friends love FanDuel. They bet spreads, props, totals, all the action they want on the game, and they're able to do so through FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash SAS and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.com. Org slash chat in Connecticut, 1 800 9 with it in Indiana, 1 800 522 4700, or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1 877 770 STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland, visit 1 800 gambler.net in West Virginia, or call 1 800 522 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts, or call 1 877 8 Hope NY or text Hope NY in New York. Welcome back here to the Stephen A. Smith Show. I'm coming from my home studio location. I'm outside of studio, but I'll be damned if I wasn't going to make time for this interview right here. This is my brother. I've known him for many, many years. Former star in the National Basketball Association. 21-year career. NBA champion. Boston Celtics 2008. Hall of Famer. Class of 2022. And I'll get into all the other stuff that he's doing right now. There's only one KG, everybody. The one and only Kevin Garnett. What's up, big time? What's, What's going up, on, man? How you doing, King? How you how you living? Man, man, I'm living well, man. How you doing? How's everything been with you, bro? Things great, man. And I, 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 I figured some things out and everything's flowing. Just the way we want it to be, man. It's good to see you, man. Man, it's so good to see you. Before I get into anything, man, I, I just want to say I'm so proud of you, so happy to see you. You're doing big things. And and I just, listen, we're going to get into this later, but I just want to give some people the resume. I just, I just want to throw the resume out because you know I'm big on resumes, KJ. I'm, I'm big on resumes here. Production company, Content Cartel, produces his own show, KG Certified. Let's make sure we get that out of the way, which, by the way, is available on Showtime Basketball in conversations with several distribution partners. Now that Showtime has announced they're about to shut down, you got two films on Tubi coming up, Cinnamon and Murder City. You wanted to reimagine black exploitation and black noir. Let's not forget about that. Just building the KG brand and everything like that. You always had this vision. You always plotted this out, or is this something that just happened since you retired? I gotta say, Stephen, they coming out of Minnesota, man. I wanted to really go out of basketball and go right back into basketball. I felt like I had a a good um, connection with the younger guys at that time. It was, you know, I, I, when I went back to Minnesota from Brooklyn, I knew that I was going to retire in Minnesota. Coming out of there, I wanted to go right into uh, management. I wanted to be able to help curate the mentality of a lot of these kids because I was seeing that it was different. Um, I had three stars around me or three future stars around me, with that being Zach Levine, uh, um, Carl Anthony Towns, and then Andrew Wiggins. And all of them had unbelievable talent. And, yeah, that was my love. And then that went for a loop when uh, Flip passed. When Flip passed, 
Everything mm. changed, and I had to make a deviate. Hold on for a second, because everybody don't know who Flip is. That's Flip I'm Saunders, sorry. former Flip head Saunders. coach and GM for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Flip Saunders passed, man, and uh, his unlo- his his passing came at just the craziest timing to where everything shifted to where uh, I saw basketball not being the future, and and I started getting offers on um, uh, from networks mainly to talk about the game and to talk about. You know, this, this, this part of the game that we haven't seen yet. You know, again, this is mm-hmm. 2016, 15 that I'm talking about. Right. And then, um, I got offered a movie from the, uh, the Southie brothers called, uh, Uncut Gems. And then it was oh, only. Yeah, you were I- great in that, by the way. You were great what in that. It? Listen, let me ask you a question before we go on, bro. They asked, sure. they asked me to play myself. And I was like, cool. Can you mess up playing yourself? You can. You can. Because how? if, 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 look, how, let me tell you how. The bright lights get to a lot of people. They talk like they don't, they ain't phased by the bright lights, but all of a sudden the bright lights come on and cats get a bit timid mm. and they want to be polished mm. instead of authentic. See, somebody mm. like you, I'm not worried about that because you don't believe in being anything but authentic, no. but other cats who are more, who are more image conscience per se, mm. who want to project uh, a, a certain imagery rather than just themselves. Mm. Yeah, you can mess up being you. Well, you I, didn't think that. I didn't think that. I didn't think that I could mess up being Kevin. You know what I'm saying? So right. when I did that part, it was a lot of stuff that was coming from an organic place. I've been in the jewelry store with the guys. I've been, you know, been in clubs. I, like a lot, I haven't been in a, a auction, <laughs> but a lot right. of stuff was speaking back to me. You know what I'm saying? So Right. It was only to when I dabbled in that, I went to Turner and did some things for them for three years. And then I started to open up my eyes and start to be like, yo, you know, Shaq, I, play, I work with Shaq. I work with Chuck. I work with Kenny. I work with Ernie, work with a bunch of those guys at Turner. I actually shaped my love for not just journalism, but then being able to give an insight where, where there's a lot of holes to be filled. And there was a lot of, um, I just saw my place. I saw where I fit. And I want to have that be like you said earlier, a, a very authentic and very different from what I was seeing out there. And mm-hmm. ever since then, man, I just jumped in two feet. I'm a visionary. A lot of people that know me know that I work mm-hmm. in vision. And right. um, as I started to just turn this thing, I started to see the devious and I started to see the uh, the leveraging parts. And then slowly but surely, I got a small team. We're all on the same same uh, kite as far mm-hmm. as how we think. And then we see the things that are being put out here. And it's hard to be able to say that the wheel is already created, right? What is your mm-hmm. variant? that you're going to throw to the world that people haven't seen. That's the wheel. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's, it's been a process. It's still a process. I think that quality is over everything, but more importantly, man, the vision is going and you know, like that's the hard part, getting something up, getting it turning, people respecting it, people viewing, right. people checking it with linear TV moving in all these other parts. Yep. I, it was perfect timing to do what we did. Well, it's interesting that you bring all of that up because you talk about being a visionary, which you absolutely are. But more than anything else, more than an elite player, more than a champion and a Hall of Famer, you've always been a leader. You ain't been a follower. And this is the thing that a lot of people don't know about, because obviously you and I haven't spoken much over the years, but we've always been cool. First of all, they don't know that me and you got a familiar, two familiar boys, Boris Battle, Boris Terrell Battle, that used to work with the Minnesota Timberwolves, our man Boris, you know, that was my teammate at Winston-Salem state and of course our man sam mitchell we all boys with each other in the whole bit the one thing that i tell people they say that man you act like you know you don't talk to kg much but damn you always talk about him being real authentic so how would you know Stephen? A., how would you know i said yo man 2003 he might not even remember this i show up in minnesota i'm a beat writer for the philadelphia 76ers 76 is playing minnesota kg pulled me to the side because yo man you getting on michael ola with candy too much and we talking and we talking and you tip it you hipping me to the game like yo we respect the hell out of you but be your real true authentic self but Stephen a you know Show some compassion from time to time. You broke that down to me. And I was like, yo, that went a long damn way being fair, making sure you fair minded. So I always appreciated that about you. And I bring all of that up to say, as you reflect on your career and where you've been, how much of an assistance has your career been in doing what you do now? Because you just finished pointing out, we all on the same page. It's a small group, but we all on the same page. You brought that up. How much did your playing career and what you learned as a player play a role in your ability to lead now with all you're trying to do? Well, I like to think that it doesn't matter what uh, venture you're in. Leadership skills take on the same thing. 
Um, you're not going to ask someone to do something that you weren't willing to do yourself. You have to right. be unequivocally the hardest worker. And you need to be prepared for when things go south to have solutions for those things. If you're not those mm -hmm. three things, not saying that you can't be a leader, you're just leading in a different way or a little different from me. Um, when I led uh, teams and when I was learning how to lead, Sam Mitchell would always take it upon me to when the, when things got really rough to really jump in them and just be really solution based. It ain't about arguments about what's the best solution. So I try to use those things that I learned in being a young leader, the things that helped me with teams, the things that helped me with communicating with guys that was non-communicative, getting the guy to be motivated when he wasn't motivated, taking a crap situation, trying to flip it into something and pouring the positives out of it or really the roadmap of leadership to me. And I take those in, in, in account to everything that I do. You know, when we we set out, just imagine this, and I always like to tell the story to people. Like, like you just sure. called out the accolades of, 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 of creating a content uh, company. Imagine sitting down with a high school coach. You play high school basketball. You play basketball, right? right? Imagine sitting down with your high school coach say, hey, look, we ain't going to college. We're going to the NBA. And that, and that mom look at you and go, and go back to turn the TV and go back to watching TV. You go, hey man, hey, hey, hey man, hey, <laughs> hey, right. write this down, man. We're not, we're not going to college. I need you to. And then he rip away from you and look at you like, boy, are you high? What, what are you? And go back to watching TV. Right. He didn't believe it to the third time till I had the serious look on my face, like I was finna either fire on him or it's about to be some other type of smoke. To where he looked at me like, are you serious? So I come from where people don't always align with your vision and look at you like you're crazy when you say something. I am a true believer that you can do anything you put your mind to. And I am a manifest manifestator. I, I put things in, in the universe and I, and I see them. I see them as they're happening. I did this when I played. I did this throughout my career in success and also in failures. And so I say this to say that my walks of life have not only helped me, but they've helped me in terms to where... Uh, they mirror each other. Like um, uh, we got people uh, that uh, have ownership in our company that don't ever want to be seen. They want to play the shadows. I played with a guy named Rosho Nesterovich who was quiet and he didn't ever, he never wanted to communicate. And I had to learn how to get the best out of Rosho, but without, you know, having the components of being communicative and, and all these other things. So I like to say, man, that when I speak to players and when I speak to young people, they are only listening to me because of my walks of life and the things that I've been able to achieve and, and, mm -hmm. and survive and survive to talk about and to, you know, survive and talk about and learn from and apply those mm -hmm. things that I've learned. So, you know, I'm, I'm never trying to what? play an expert. I've always told people from day one, I'm a, I'm a F it up before I get it right. But I come from a, I, from, I come from a great place. My heart, everything that I do is for the spirit of something betterment. And I believe that I'm light. So, you know, with those things, the walks of life, your experiences, when I sit down and talk to you about what you've been through and negotiating and just this yep. whole journalism, just all of it, bro. That that's that's the that's the, that's the meat to me. That's that's yeah. that's the wonder of all of it. So, you know, um those things have helped me in every parts of my life in the things that I've absolutely been successful in. What player in the NBA, past or present, most reminds you of yourself? You meaning in, in what? Your mentality. mentality. Everything that you just described about you. Oh, Most remind me. I ain't talking basketball. I'm talking about your mentality. You know, when I, I, I sat down and talked to uh, Russell Westbrook a couple of times, and if you've ever sat down with him, he, he's deep not brother. all. Deep brother. Deep brother. Deep brother. And is real. Like what? Like, like, like. So real today, and raw. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like not a was, fake bone in his body. Man, he was it was it, it was dope to talk to him, Stephen A. Eh? And he yeah. felt like an old soul. I felt like he was an old cousin that I ain't I ain't know I had. And right. when I listened to his belief, when I listened to his um declarative, the things that mean something to yeah. him, they really do mean something to him. And when yes. I when I had a conversation with him, I, I and I saw how he worked, he works at a high engine which is why he's always hurt, which is why he's nicked up every now and then. But he's going a million miles. He's like, not when I see that, that's like the closest thing I can embody. You know, I would hear all these tales of Michael Jordan and how he practiced. And then I would take that, Stephen, and I would practice with that for years. Every asset, asset, Mitchell, every drill, everything we was doing, I was trying to win. And when I won, I was, I was really upset. Like, didn't nobody understand? Like, uh, J.R. Rice would be like, bro, relax, it's practice. 
And then didn't nobody get that. But I did. Sam Mitchell did. A couple people got that. Flip got it. And I thought I was a, a outsider with that until I started meeting other people that had that same kind of feel. Russell Westbrook probably energetically and wholesomely reminds me of myself. He cares about others. He he's a he's a he's a he's a passer. I wouldn't say pass guy first, but he's a guy who wants to help the next man who's struggling. He wants to help that guy. When I watch him play him and Zubak, he'll have the layup and he'll just be so unselfish that he'll fake the layup and go back to Zoo. And now and I'm like, you know, that's kind of who he is. So if I'm if I talk about one player that kind of mirrors me just in that way, man, it's it's gotta be Russell Westbrook, who I'm a huge fan of. It's interesting that you bring that up about Russell because from a media perspective, we would watch him for years. And as a point guard, he was shooting. Sometimes his shot selection was questionable. He wasn't the greatest jump shooter in the world, so we would be critical of that. And then one day I got I had I had the pleasure of having a conversation with him. He was talking about the media and he was really open. I'm not gonna share all the conversation because that's a private conversation between he and I, yeah, but I'm right. only saying it to pay tribute to him the brother was as real and authentic as it gets he was reminding me of or really enlightening me about what was really important to him and then you hearing about his community and who he's gearing his message towards how this motor that he operates under you know what it's all about who he's trying to inspire you start listening to him and talking to him and you're like well wait a minute it ain't anything selfish about that. There's nothing that's selfish about it. This brother's about team. He just ain't backing down. He a damn warrior. And he, and he let you know if you want somebody in the foxhole with you, he the kind of cat you want in the foxhole with you. My only thing with somebody like him and not just him, but an abundance of the modern day athlete is if somebody's talking about a deficiency in your game, that don't mean they talking about a deficiency in you. You are good people. You bring a lot to the table. This might not be your strength. Something else might be your strength. And sometimes you wonder whether or not they really hear that message. Am I fair in saying something like that when you when I'm describing some of the modern day athletes that exist today? Well, <clears throat> your assessment is always fair because it's your POV and this your assessment. Now, I'm not saying a guy has to like it. Right. Uh, some guys don't have to respect it, but from someone who's respected and someone who knows what they're talking about. Like, bro, let me say something to you. No one's going to listen to someone who has no accountability, no character, or no information, no knowledge what they're talking yeah, right. about. So when you speak on what you're speaking from, you're, you know what I love about you? This is why you king, king. This is why I give it to you, king. This is why you king, bro. Because you come from a whole nother, it's almost like you did R&D for 20 years, Right. <laughs> And then all right. of a sudden, you take that 20-year R&D and you make a show out of it. And then you start showing us what made you get a show. And this is why you king. This is why you can put the Jalen Rose in front. This is why you can put Skip in front of you. This is why you can put all these Michael Will, but you can put all these, line them up, and you can put them in front of Mad Dogs and, and the J.J. Reddicks and the, and the, and the, and the uh, what's your kid Shannon from? Uh, Shops, Jason Shannon Williams. Shops, I, I used to love you and Jason Williams just, banter. Yeah. That was beautiful. Y'all need to bring that kid back. That kid had a lot to bring to it, but I'm, I'm oh, going. He's coming. Right. He's, on, he's on Thursdays. He's on I, first takes on Thursdays. Y'all yeah. need to blow that up. I, I miss him. I, 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 you know, I don't keep yeah. up with it like I keep up with it, but right. I keep up with it. You know what I'm saying? But I right. used to love that bench because you used to push you. And every time you got pushed, you went to another level, King. I give it to you, King. You went to a fucking another level. And I love that because that's what this got to do. It's got to push the line. So right. when you come from that assessment, did he, did he like what you said? Cool. He didn't, but it's a respect there to say, Oh, wow. Just because, uh, uh, Stephen A said this. Now, he probably didn't like it, but I tell you this, it puts whatever you said on notice about that. So he knows he's not shooting well. He knows that pass. He knows he's, he, he has seven, eight, nine turnovers for the last 10 games. He knows that. He, it's on him. He goes home with that. You know what he needs from Stephen A? He needs that Stephen A big brother. He needs KG right. that big brother. He needs that big brother in front of everybody to say, Hey, Russ, you didn't shoot well tonight, but I know you're a great shooter. Keep shooting that motherfucker. And keep going, bro. Pat him on it. That's where we are today. My problem, right. I was just talking about this to my home, but before we got on here, the problem I think with today is, is that we are so hung up on the yesteryear of the, of the, of the culture and the history that build the league that, bro, we're missing out on greatness right in front of us. LeBron James okay. is 38 motherfucking years old doing something we ain't never seen. We got a right. whole seven, six Frenchman in the goddamn league. He's a rookie looking like he's a two, three year old player. Looking like he's a guard. He nutmegged the guard. 
Man, get the man, bro. We got, listen, Will Chamberlain is rolling over his grave right now. If we told him a 6'10 power forward was playing center and jumps this high is the best. <laughs> bro, we got to get off it, bro. Bro, we got to get off this. this you know right. what, Steve? I say this, bro, and I say this. And I say this to the world. I'm glad we on here. Sure. Bro, we got to get over this. Michael Jordan, Magic, they are the past. We got to embrace this new-ish. Bro, we ain't never mm -hmm. seen Steph Curry. We ain't never seen nothing like Steph Curry. We ain't never seen it. Shoot we some never balls, seen it. bro. We keep talking about Jerry West. Shout that Jerry West was a super goon. Did great things for the league. But yeah, right. we're in a new time, bro. Jerry West ain't never seen this type of range. He can't but see let me push ball. back. Let me push back with my, 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 my perspective on that. Because I don't I don't disagree with you. I don't Not disagree with you. We need to embrace this greatness that's before us. Right. Fuck, excuse my push, but fuck what's happened last year. If we want to make some parodies, some comparisons to, you know what? He did it in 82. He played 65. I get that. Uh, Non-practice right. versus practice, the development, what he should right. be like at 27. Right. Bro, all that's out the league now. Boy, these young right. boys are killing all that. Bro, LeBron right. just hit 39,000 points, bro. Bro, we ain't right. never seen nobody hit <laughs> But let me, but let me, but let me, but let me throw this back at you. Let me throw this back at you. Totally agree with you. But my retort to that would be this. The game started in 1947. If I sit up there and I say of the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of players, I think MJ's number one and LeBron James is number two all time. Whether you disagree or agree with me, I'm not disrespecting you by saying you number two all time. You see what I'm but saying? That, I, I'm that's, saying what, you know, that's what that says when you say that. That's what I'm saying. Why? Why? Because someone is looking at the body of work. Okay, let me ask you this. If you've never sure. seen it before and now you see it, what value is that? That's exceptional. It's exceptional when you've never seen it? When you've never no, no, seen I'm saying, it? I'm, it's, it's so, so let me ask you this. Yeah, you've never seen the Bugatti. A Bugatti pull up beside you in the car. You, what, what value is that? Yeah, that's true. I don't so know if you can put saying. a value so on that. You, we ain't never seen Steph Curry. Never, right. never. Name one motherfucker right. look like this. None, never. We ain't never seen a nigga 38, average 30, and then got 39. That we ain't never seen that. We ain't never seen a 7'6 yeah. nigga. Nutmeg. Nut, but you know we did, but we did, but we did see a motherfucker oh. sit up there, excuse our language. We did see a motherfucker win oh. oh. three peat twice. After three peated, then took a year and a half off, then came back and three peated again. I mean, it all depends on how you measure it. I'm looking at Steph, greatest shooter on the planet Earth, four time champion, league, two time league MVP. I'm looking at LeBron, four time league MVP, four championships, 10 trips to the NBA finals. It's absolutely positively sensational. But in the same breath, so is six titles in eight years. So is 10 scoring championships. So is nine time all NBA defensive team. That's not, that's not insulting anybody is what I'm trying to say. It's appreciating all of the greatness. Yes, but I'm telling you, in the risk of where we at now, moving the game, okay. that's how they're thinking. Jordan, Got did, it. Jordan did do this. Jordan, did, Listen, listen, this is, this is what I'm saying. We're missing out on the league being picked up and carried. The league is being carried into another place where none of us, Stephen A., everybody that's 50 and under have never seen none of the stuff that's going on. Now, do we say shot selection has went out the window? Productivity. Uh, the kids ain't playing uh, uh, more games than we did. Guess what, Stephen A., the R&D has been, has been in. What what we did in, uh, matter of fact, let's break it down like this, 70 to 80s. True. Drug infested. Man, David yep. Stern did an unbelievable job. He had made those alliances with those guys. He made the yep. league clean. 80 to 90. Super, yep. probably, if not the 70s, the more roughest part of the league back, I mean, back before when George Mike and them were just bowing each other in the face and you just play with a split lip, all that, right? When you get to 2023, bro, when we're supposed to be floating and levitating and I'm supposed to be able to get food right here that I ain't got to go into Beverly Hills and get, bro, we're in 224. Things are supposed to look different. The game looks different. I don't want to watch uh, 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 Steph Curry doing uh, Isaiah Thomas moves. No, I want to see Steph Curry doing Steph Curry 224, 225 moves. I agree. So that's where we're at. We're missing out on greatness because we're so hung up on those six championships. You, you think Mike Jordan was talking about Bill Russell when he was chasing six? No, he was talking about what Chicago and Jordan and fuck Lajuan and fuck, you know what I'm saying? He was, he was doing might. So that, right. bro, we gotta, we gotta embrace where we at. We gotta start looking at now, 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 when we start looking at this new league, we got, we, we the uncle, we the big brother, whether we want to admit this or not. We gotta start okay. giving flowers out more. Like we gotta start, we, like we I ain't got no problem. With that. 
We 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 can we can critique your game. No hey, look, I'm looking for Anthony Davis. You got to give me another gear. Well, hey, look, wait a minute. That's what I'm game. saying. That, that's I'm glad you went there. The game. So he gonna say, "Oh gee, how how I've got to fake the game." Hey, yeah. OG. Now here comes the conversation, and this is the build. This okay. is what happened when you took OGs out the locker room. That 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 knowledge from Sam Mitchell to Kevin Garnett. That knowledge yes. was everything. This yes. is what happened. This is what I'm saying. So in that, now you ain't got that. So now when you pull up and I watch your workout before the game, I can give you a couple jewels. I can right. come in here and say what up. That's what we need more. We need more of the old heads to come to the games. And but wait a we minute. We built the history. We built the history. But why you, but why, but why you encourage it? Like, for, for example, I saw what you had to say about Anthony Davis. I was saying same shit. Same shit. And I'm going like this. I like, thank God. Thank God, KG. I, now, mind you, listen to the language. Did you hear scrub? No. Did you no. hear a brother that can't play? No. no. What you said, what you heard somebody like me saying, I said, no, I ain't going to call him street clothes. When you get hurt, you get hurt. I'm not going to disrespect the man like that, but I am going to call his ass six flags because one minute you high and then the next day you low and you healthy. It don't make no damn sense. You Anthony Davis, when he healthy, KG, when he healthy, he topped seven players on a fucking planet earth on the planet earth this brother's that elite how, and this is my thing kg how are you gonna be that great when you bring your a game and be okay with the fact that you got to be led by a 39 year old in his 21st season that you asking to carry the load when you are fully capable of carrying that load i can't tell you how happy i was well, i swear to god i had to have you on this podcast when i saw you weeks ago going like this yo 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 ad what's up what you gonna do? Now, you, now to me, you being big bro, you encouraging him. But in today's generation of players, you disrespecting them. That don't make sense to me, KG. That it's don't a, make sense to me. It's just a different way you gotta relay it. And the okay. young boys, I'm being dead ass. Just like, just sure, like, sure. just like your uncle would come in and hit you in the chest. I'm like, damn, man, what you on? Like, now nephew older. So you gotta talk to him different. The, 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 the things that we would, real talk. Just imagine how we talked to each other 20 years ago. I'm talking about when I first see you. What, hey, hey, yeah. hey, hey, hey. If somebody saw us talking, they think we was arguing a fighting damn near, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So this ain't that. You know what I'm saying? These are our kids. These are our right. kids. These are the kids that- We got to adjust to them. That's what I'm saying, bro. We, we're not finna, you know what I'm saying? We're not about to hit somebody in the chest. And no, no, no. You can't even use some of that yesteryear shit here. That's all I'm saying. All of us got to down. We got to get the download. Some of us ain't downloaded the latest update to today. We're still in that same market. And I'm saying if you are critiquing, um, if you're critiquing someone's game, if you're critiquing someone's style and energy level comparisons of two, and you saw those energy levels help that team go like this, like we're saying of Anthony Davis. And then two, let's be honest. You and I can't want this more than Anthony Davis. That's the real issue yeah. here. Yeah. We're talking with more conviction and, 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 and energy here than, yes. than, than, than that. So that's all we're saying here. We're fans and we're basketball enthusiasts. And this is that energy that comes out of that, wanting to be, wanting somebody's godness to be greater than what they're given. So I totally get that. The problem is, is how we relay it and how we say it. And you know what? He might not be used to the punch in the chest and, hey, my, hey, homie, you got to, you might be the one you got to pull to the side and like, hey, look, big fella, I see what parts where you can, and then you got to go like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's how I've learned to speak to young people. And that's, that's right. my transition for me. And, and, and let, I, go ahead. let me break this down. Here's the difference between somebody in my position and somebody as a champion who's a brethren and a member of that, of that, of that yeah, fraternity yeah. like you yourself. You you this you is the doing. difference. You could say that just like that. Because you're looking at it like, A.D., hey, what's up? You know how I'm looking at it? Yeah, the yesteryear point is valid. But here's the other point. LeBron is now. And we seeing this brother at age 39 in his 21st year averaging 25 a game. You going to leave this brother hanging like that? Your brother. You're going to leave him hanging like that. You're going to make him go out there. You're going to make him get in the gym the way he gets and exert what he exerts and put that much on his shoulders because you know he wouldn't have to if your A game was there. you just going to leave him hanging like that. And see, where I would sit up, where I would butt heads, for example, with my brother KG, I'm going like this. I know you wouldn't do it in front of me. But KG, you try and tell me you out there, you, you in the locker room, you back there with them, you talking to them, and you ain't going to go like this. Yo, what the fuck you doing? You know no. you, you know you all world. You know you could bust somebody's ass anytime you want to. You really gonna sit up there and give me 41 night and 11 another? You really gonna do something like that? I, I cannot.
cannot believe that KG would not say that. I can't tell you what I would say. And what I okay. would say to him would be probably between him and I, I would sure. be encouraging though. I wouldn't call him no six flags, anything. And then That's two, true. we got to be honest. This ain't got nothing to do with you. This ain't got nothing to do with me. Anthony Tim. Davis probably thinks that he's doing the best he can. He mm. probably thinks, hey, look, I'm giving 100% to yeah. this. They thinking I can't get no more. I don't know, but mm. I gave you what I gave you. And that's what I'm saying. Bro, if you don't look at it outside of the scope in which someone is giving it to you, you see the same. You see it how you see it. And that's what I'm saying. Anthony Davis probably thinks, hey, man, I just had 35 and 15 with two blocks. Man, that was a crazy night. Yeah, he might think that that was good for him. He might think that. And you know what? It might have been good. We're talking about the comparisons of, of an older man and being able to yeah. carry and give this thing over to some, another superstar. Right. And that's all I'm saying. I don't think that he can, I don't right. think Le, Le, that's still LeBron's team. LeBron is right. still, LeBron looks bouncier than AD. I'm just, yes! I'm just he looks, he looks younger. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, with that, 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 I'm saying both of us. Yeah, with I'll, the say right in front of you. This, I, I'll say it right in front of you. You know how I am about MJ, but I, I, I'll say it for you because you're my brother. I'll be like this. I have been watching LeBron lately and I've been going like this. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> I mean, 21st season. What the hell is going on? You know, I, I have looked at him and went like this. Shout to Black I'm Jesus, like, man. We're never going to, hey, listen, we're never going to disrespect the king. You know what I'm saying? Black no Jesus. Doubt. Shout to MJ. He's, he's, he's my goat of how, of all of this, the business, the, 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 yep. the, the everything. He's, everything. he's the vision of, of, of what every black man should aspire for. Have being a billionaire, having your own, having your I own agree. labels being revealed. Like he set the tone, right? Man, we ain't never seen a 6'9, 265, run the joint, uh, 3'8, run the, like, like, like I get it. I played against bro. I've let it go. It ain't personal with me no more. I'm watching right. as a fan and I'm giving flowers and I'm looking at it from a different perspective of things that I've never seen in the game, Steve. Mm -hmm. Like I ain't seen yeah. some of the stuff we're talking about, bro. It's yeah. all new to the game. We ain't never yeah. seen the 39 year old, bro. You know what 39 it's feel true. like? You know, you it's know true. what 39 feel like, bro. Yeah, 39, bro. Brian got to be on some goddamn stuff that ain't came out yet, bro. He I don't know what the hell's up. Bro, he don't know I, 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 I can't believe what I'm seeing. And, I, and I'm so grateful because you know me. I want to be in L.A. in June. So I'm not and mad. It's, I'm it's, very, it's, I'm very, very happy to see him doing what he's doing. I ain't apologize for that shit to nobody. Yeah, I'm that straight shit, up man. I need some of that new, new, goddamn. I need some of that new, new. Bring that. Let me get some of that. Damn, damn right. Damn thing. right. What, 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 what he doing? But let me ask you I'm this. I'm happy so for him, though. Real, that real talk, I'm sure, happy sure. for him because he took his lumps and he's not taking his hits. He's in that conversation. And that's why I like to leave it. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're in the conversation, bro, it ain't, and it's only right. three or four y'all. He's in, in the conversation. conversation. He's, He's in, in the conversation. conversation. He's in the conversation without question. As you reflect on your career in terms of the relationships that you've had with the opposition, with teammates, et cetera, et cetera, any regrets? No. Zero. Everybody who, listen, let me say something to you. Everybody that I've ever played against and played with has respected the way that I went about my business. I was a true professional. You see how you do your business? You see how you come in, how you well prepare, how you well versed? The night before, you knew what questions to ask or you wanted to ask. You had it already in your head. I'm the same way. My, 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 the way I prepared for a game, I, I don't know, it was, it was very unique. I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't, during game day, I'm talking about the minute I woke up, it started for me. Actually, it started the night before. That's the reason I didn't really go out and party a bunch. I couldn't really, I couldn't really simmer down. I had another level of energy that I knew that I could tap into. It was about calming down and understanding the moments. It was about, you know, being relaxed to let things happen. You know, like I had to take a lot of, um, you know, a lot of times you, you look at players, you gotta, in, you gotta energize them to have energy. I actually had to work backwards and learn how to actually use this energy and, and, and use it in a positive way. So, um, the way I prepared and the way I competed, was non 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 to non to nothing, mm -hmm. like straight up and down. Like I was here to destroy you. Like you was trying to destroy me, and it was no if ends or buts about where I was, why I lied with that. I would dap you up, and it was respect with that dap of who you are. It was respects to me doing my 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 getting prepared to play you in the forms of who you are. She Duncan. Uh, uh, Dice, uh, Joe Smith, uh, 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 of, 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 I mean, Zach Randolph, uh, yeah. of, um, Chris Bosch. I can go on, on uh, Andre Bless. I can go, I can go on and on and on with all the players mm -hmm. that I have to guard, uh, Yao, Dirk, all of these guys. So I don't have no, 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 
know know anything on how I prepared and how I went at the game. That that was my that was my DNA. That's the way I wanted to leave my mark on the game, and that's the mm-hmm. way I want to be remembered. I was a fierce it's, competitor. If I was like LT, goddammit. it, I wanted to rip it. your shit up. I wanted to duck on your ass. I wanted to I wanted you to go zero for twelve. I wanted to shut you down, come down, and and and, and dog your ass on the offensive end. I was one. So was that way? Was that the case with everybody, or was there? It was there ever anything extra for a particular opponent? No, no, no okay. not in between the lines with me. No, like I say, like I'll be honest. When I played Timmy, it was special. It was different because I knew the IQ. I knew, I knew the moves. I knew the thinking. When I played She Wallace, the same thing. When I played Chuck, same thing. When I played great players, it, it takes you. In order to play a great player, you have to be on the same plateau, if the same mm-hmm. lines of the thinking. And offensively, they're coming at you with tenacity that you got to actually defensively go at them. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a game of chess. And if you mess it up, up they went. And if you get it right, you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of, that's the game. But Mm -hmm. when you go into those matchups, those guys are all killers. All those guys I just named can put 50 up on you, can get 20, 30 rebounds, could, could, could maneuver the game, could, they were just geniuses. And, and and that was the respect I had for those players. So that when I went in there, it was a it was an uncanny level of respect mm-hmm. for those guys. But it also was a level of I'm here to destroy you. I'm here to I'm here mm-hmm. to, I'm here to dominate this matchup and mm-hmm. be hands down with no no, want, no 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 nothing. Like that's what it I is. Want, and then at the end of the day, as I got mm-hmm. as I got older, I, I learned how to better monitor and better curate that because that because right. I was never friends with anybody that I played against. Joe Smith okay. was the closest because we played with each other. She did not because right. our mothers were best friends. But other than that, no. Did I lie to you? I didn't lie to you. I told you. This brother speaks how he speaks. He brings it how he brings it. He is absolutely positively one of a kind and he's got some spectacular things going on. I'd love to tell you that's all he had to say. But then again, I love telling you that's not true. He has a lot more to say. Part two of my interview with Kevin Garnett airs this Monday. Until then, you'll have to live with part one. And I'm quite sure that'll be easy for you to do after what you just heard. More of Kevin Garnett, part two, coming up this Monday. Until then, enjoy and have a peaceful and blessed weekend. Peace and love, everybody. See you Monday.